Hey there, G3XE here, and uh, episode of Wargame Talk. I just watched a video that uh, Tabletop Minions put up a week ago, or just nearly a week ago. And I hadn't seen it before, otherwise I probably would have made this video earlier, but I mean, like, I just watched it. And I kind of just was like, oh, I gotta make a response video. Um, granted, not too many people see it, but... Because um, I really love Tabletop Minions' channel, and Adam's... Adam is the guy, content creator there, and it's about uh, models, painting, and, and Warhammer, and tabletop war games, and stuff like that. Really awesome channel, I've been watching it for a while. But this particular video, for whatever reason, I really disagreed with. Not in any, like, bad way, Adam, because it's like, awesome channel, great content, but I was just gonna throw back some, you know, uh, it, well, the video was about, I guess I'll just jump into it, because the video is about... How to paint better. And I guess it's not wrong at all, his video, but my overall thesis is going to be it's one way to look at it. And he looks at it through a very, very technical way. Um, but he, the way he's describing it, it was like sounding almost like a job. Like, just start the work and then maybe it won't seem so daunting. And analytically look at, well, how can I improve and whatever. I'm more in favor of the... Um, method of <laughs> have fun, goof around with it, um, try to s not to spend too much money, and just not worry about things. And so let me explain how I go through. And I'm just gonna be talking about painting and whatever. I got I'm I was painting while I watched it. So, um, I first got into war games after watching many war game the, the channels videos. And I was like, this game looks awesome. I gotta check this out. And I go to the store, and I see the price tag. I'm like, oh, that's, and my jaw drops, right? So I'm a, I, I, I was interested in Dungeons and & Dragons and stuff, and, and nerdy-type games of all, of all that, but I never really had had a good way to play those, because um, none of my friends wanted to play, wanted to get into any of the games. I did play Magic, but uh, The Gathering. Um... So I, I get getting into war games, right? So I'm like, okay, well, I'm just gonna make my own up. Oh, that's the beauty of tabletop games. So this greatly embarrasses me, <laughs> but this is the box. This is the Vault Tech lunchbox, all right. This is the models from my very first original war game, where I was just kind of looking at what I saw and the terms being thrown around on mini war gaming, watching bat reps, knowing nothing else. Kind of making up my own crap. For probably about ten bucks, I bought at in this toy aisle of like a dollar store a bag of pirates and skeletons. So I just thought they were cool. I was like, okay, we're gonna practice. See these paints over here? These are craft paints. They're from the craft store, right? They're from Joann's, and they're super cheapo. But you get tons of them. And I was like, well, it doesn't matter. And I got okay. These brushes, these brushes, also Joann's. They came in a big pack, you know, with brushes like this. And, you know, it was like multi-pack, so obviously, you know, it's like, okay, well, I'm going to use the small ones, but it was super cheap, you know? And, uh, so here's what, here's some of the things from it. And I have the rules in here for them, but, okay. <laughs> here is a paladin-type dude. Here's some <laughs> skeletons. <laughs> so please, these are the very first model I painted. Be kind, be kind. But, um... You can also tell the scale is wrong. They are massive, like a Space Marine, um, in comparison, is like that, uh, to the skeleton. So, um, the skeleton, like, you know, I guess would be like 10 feet tall in that scale, whatever, but it's fine. I didn't care. I was throwing around ideas. Let's see. I do have their stat sheets here from when I made up the game. So I had the, the Knights team... And the skeletons team, and they had different weapons and everything. Oh my god, I got a lot. So this is a creative hobby. So I'm coming at it from the creative aspect. Okay, so the Knights of the Crown were one team. This is all the, their rules. Um, and the Damned Legion, right? And that's all their rules. And there are, let's see, five units per side. And... Um... Very, I mean, I started out being like, 
Okay, my idea for the game system was you would have a skill number and you would roll that many d6 and you totaled it and then the highest total won. So, you know, it didn't really dawn on me that yet until I kind of started playtesting that the like the difference between rolling one die and rolling two d6, like the two d6 is very rare that it will lose the one d6. I show you all that and all these kind of miniatures because I was just having fun with it, right? There is um, a plethora of and and but I got valid painting experience from this. I didn't buy a box of Space Marines, and I didn't know what a wash was. I didn't know what to do. I used blobs and blobs of unthinned acrylic craft store paint. Um, but it didn't prime it, but I mean, that's how I learned, and it was fun, and, uh, I kind of learned as I, like, you, you do, and you do, and then you get better, and it's more fun than setting, like, I didn't look at those models at all and critique myself and say, oh, what should I do, but I also didn't spend any money on them, didn't really have any, like, I wasn't building, like, I must start my army, you know, I just wanted to paint and see what it was like, so, other things, this is for D&D, &D, a gelatinous cube, and it is just pieces of construction paper painted bright blue and glued, and taped, taped actually, not glued, into an awkward cube that doesn't, I mean, it bends and whatever, but hey, I mean, it kind of looks like a gelatinous cube if you ever play D&D, you know, so that's painting experience. I had, buy Heroclix models and paint over them. This guy, you're telling me, doesn't, um... Couldn't be an Imperial Guardsman, you know? These are the Bioshock... They have Bioshock Infinite Hero Clicks now. Like, who knew, right? Um, this is a Hero Clicks model that I cut off its base. And this is... I was, like, you know, just getting into miniatures. And so I was like, oh, well, I need a base. What can I use? Okay, yes, a ball cap. Um, and then this sit right here at Staff, that wasn't actually part of the model. That's a matchstick. So I'm giving all these context because... I think that you can start out and have a bunch of fun. And I'm not saying it's wrong to go about the other way that Adam describes. Like, that's totally valid. But for if we're talking about beginners, beginners, like, how do I get better? It's not just you just paint and then you detail what you're going to improve and work, worry about it. I think you should just buy some fun stuff and just, like, I'll show you here in a bit. Uh, oh, okay. Halloween spiders, a bag of, like, a bunch of little spiders. I glued a bunch of them to this, and it made a little spider swarm. I would check out DM Scotty's channel for painting tips, for painting, like, making your own miniatures and stuff like that. And if it's, if you're not, like, don't worry about using it in the Games Workshop approved realms of using it in 40k. I think learning to paint this type of stuff helps you. And then you can start to take your steps into, okay, I'm going to try and make all my models look like they're from the same army. Like that step. Here, Reaper Bones, another great place to buy models to practice on. This is a troll. This one, this is, represents another good tactic, I guess, which is buy models that painting poorly helps the narrative on. In the same way, I guess, in 40k, like, Nurgle is kind of... I mean, you can do some really beautiful work with it, but it's also really easy if you just want to, like, green, 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 and then you're good, right? So trolls are supposed to be nasty. This guy's paint job is obviously very, very messy. But he's a troll, so maybe that's, you know, like, I didn't wash or do anything really it just was like paint using my this detail brush right oh yeah and his base is a is a coaster from uh outback steakhouse <laughs> um this this is a pig this pig is from a little barnyard toy dollar store set that i bought for little animals i don't see any reason why you couldn't go out and buy those and try practicing painting on those and a lot of this may be for people who like D&D &D as well, because this you can use in D&D. &D. In fact, this is a little Wargame Writer guy, but I mounted him on one of the things from the same set. And it's a little sheep. So he's a little sheep writer guy. I haven't painted him yet, obviously. Um, modding more hero click stuff. I'm going to put a video detailing this more, because this is more advanced, I guess. This dude is going to be like a, I don't know, some sort of hero for 40k. And this was originally an Iron Man Hero Clicks model. You know, so you can get... So Reaper Bones, definitely check those out. They're like a dollar per thing. And then you just... You don't have to prime them. You just wash them underwater and they're ready to go. Like, and then just start out with that. And just paint for fun, man. And we'll get into what dry brushing and washing is because those are really simple. Like, that's what he's talking about when he talks about techniques. Here's another one. At... 
If you have a moody movie, uh, movie trading company or vintage stock store near you, I don't know if there are places beyond Texas. Um, they're very cool. They sell used stuff of all variety. For whatever reason, I don't know why the hell, I didn't know this was that popular, but mine was selling little baggies of used Skylanders toys. From It's like a toy and a video game. So I didn't know anything about it, but they were $5. This dude was $5. Now, this isn't his original paint job. He was supposed to be a tree and guy, right? But I just primed him and did what I'm about to talk about, which is a, a dry brush. And in my friendly games of Age of Sigmar, um, I use him for a tree lord ancient. I think it looks awesome. So, I guess I also think that having fun and like being a casual gamer comes from having awesome friends. I think the gaming clubs are really good for meeting friends to play with. And I also think if you want to be super competitive, obviously you can follow your own path. But I think that a good friend who just is into into the same kind of nerdy stuff that you are and wouldn't mind just trying out like there are so many free games on the internet. Havoc 2325, free skirmish game I just put up on my blog. You want to check it out? I'm not saying anything. <laughs> um, there's free RPGs. You know, it's just like, let's just put down some models. Let's just get better, paint some stuff, right? These are Reaper Bones models currently being painted. Okay, this brings me now to um, washing and dry brushing. Um... By the way, this is going to be an exalted hero of chaos for me. That's also a uh, hero clicks model. <laughs> you can tell from the base. But I put a bunch of work into it. But, you know, he's the one with the double axes. And he was originally from Bioshock Infinite 1. So, washes. What are washes? Well, there are fancy washes you can buy when you get more into it, right? Like this and the Citadel and whatever. But you can also take black acrylic paint and put a little dab of black. I'm not using a, a palette or anything. This is a package from, like, a, a char phone charger or something, right? Um, then you take your water, because you should have your water. When people say thinner paints, the easiest way, again, the cheapo way, is just to use a little bit of water whenever you mix it, right? So now we have, but in washes, you just use a, a lot of water. So I put water and water and water, and now I have a wash essentially. We want to know what a wash does? Well, here's a little... This skeleton. This will be a perfect example. This skeleton, you know, one of my earliest paint things on the bases they came with the little toy set, not... doesn't have a wash. He has the base coats on. Okay. I'll redo this. I bought this 2D. Watch how it picks out the detail. Wait. I need to look at what I'm... Oh, no, it's working. Okay, good. Look at that. <laughs> That is... Okay, already you can see his rib cage now. Let's do his face. Already his face is more scary. So that's what washes do. They just, they go into the little crevices. So already you've upgraded your painting. That's a technique, right? And this cheapo model, it's like perfect to practice on. Oh man, he's gonna, he's gonna make all the other skeletons in my box that I never opened super jealous. Alright, that's a wash. Um, oh, I should have used it on this. Uh, this is a Reaper model, too, right? And this is just, like, random uh, foam, right, that glued upward. But I'm really excited. He's just base code, but he's like this worm coming up. Um, dry brushing. Okay. This is a Reaper model that I'm going to use for Age of Sigmar for my Salamander, for Lizardman, right? And he's looking nice. He's happy. He's been washed and base, he's been base coded and washed, right? He's on a little happy base. Dry brushing. Dry brushing is where you go, you take a color, you go boop, 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 boop. You, okay, so you get a little bit of that color. This is this is a tissue. <laughs> um, this is how you do it in the really cheapo way, right? You get a dry brush, you dip a little bit into the water, or, or I'm sorry, not the water, paint, no water, right? You wipe it off on the brush a little bit, so that almost, like, it, what, you're like, what's the point of getting paint on it? Then... You brush it against your skin until, you know, that's about good, right? Okay. Now, this is going to do the opposite of the wash and kind of bring out some detail. Or, I don't know, but you know what I mean. Just like that. I can't really 
it's hard for me to see what I'm doing, so hold on. Okay. Boom. And suddenly the blue begins to pop a little more on that side, right? I don't know. It's hard to tell on the camera. But that is that is it, man. It is practicing on models and having fun with it and making crazy kit bashes and glue, Elmer's glue all over your fingers and all that. Then, when you sit down and decide, okay, you know what? I've gotten some techniques down. I think I want to try like a, a, a squad of space marines that all look like they're part of the same thing. Then you can go out, you buy that $30 set, right, of Space Marines, and then you do the thing that Adam's talking about. But I think that he is talking about a problem where people don't want to paint, or they're worried about not getting better and stuff. But that has more to do with that they have bought this GW model, they spent a whole bunch of money on it, and they don't want to mess it up. You know, it's like, this is their shot, and whatever. I'm saying practice and just have fun on cheapo models um, from Reaper, get hero clicks, jab paint over those, get um, any, any free, oh, better yet, or another thing, I forgot to bring up, paper miniatures. I'm going to post another video about this. I, so I, in, in my list of inspiration is a thing about how to make these. This is just glue and index card paper, and you can form it into little dudes. These are just dudes. I made them, right? And the, I'm going to use them for zombies in D&D, but look at these dudes. There's a whole bunch. This is a little flag that I made with paper, right? And glue. Like, this is just paper and glue. And then I'm going to put on this little base, and it's going to be my little objective marker, right? Then, when you got paper miniatures like this, you can paint them and this doesn't even, you could, if you have Elmer's glue and paper in your house, you can do this, right? And well, I guess in paint, because then look at this, this little dude. He's a little paper wizard that I just, <laughs> just painted up, right? And then here's a little paper scout guy. And uh, this is like a little paper dwarf dude for D&D. So there's, I mean, hell, just do this. Make it like objective markers or something or little zombies and just practice on those. Like, I don't know. I guess what I'm saying is have fun with it and be creative because being too technical with it leads to the problem that we're trying to combat, which is not wanting to paint. I like to watch something, get some, like, ra a random thing that might be cool, you know, and see how it turns out. This one, which I posted, I think, in the Tabletop Minion Showcase Club, um, is, you know, it's not that great painted, but it's a Reaper Bones model and then a Space Marine mounted on top of it on my attempt at a cool base. And it's the unicorn of corn, right? So he's it's a corn lord on Juggernaut, but it's a unicorn. And like with that, you know, I just saw that Reaper Bones model for like three bucks or whatever, and I was like, okay, this is what we're doing. Yes, this is going to happen. And like this is like if you look at the detail, <laughs> it is not well. I didn't use green stuff or any. I still don't know how to use green stuff. This is literally I chopped off his leg, and then glued it onto a different plastic bit, and then chopped off the other leg and glued it onto a different plastic bit that was also kind of square and then glued that on and then glued that on. <laughs> and But I love him. I keep him on my desk because he's badass. I don't play with him because he's super fragile because, like I said, I didn't build him that well. <laughs> and he keeps falling apart, but... Um, I don't know. Uh, have fun with the hobby. Um, buy cheap models to practice painting. Then buy your like nice models when you've decided, okay, I think I understand how washes work. I'm going to try and do they're all blue and then I'm going to do a dark blue wash and then I'm going to do a light blue dry brush and those are going to be my space marines. Like you got that in your mind, then you make the purchase, then you get the space marines and then you can do the things that Adam's talking about, which is like this is what I want to accomplish. These are the techniques applied to do it. This is, I'm going to post it, and this is a good marker of my progress. I don't think every miniature has to be a marker of a progress, because honestly, a lot of times, I just, like, screw around on the miniature, and, I mean, just remember this guy. Just remember him. <laughs> this is literally like an army man. Buy army men. That's another good one. Buy a pack of army men. Don't even prime them. Maybe prime them if you want, but just, and buy acrylic paint and, from the craft store, 
and the crappy paintbrushes and just be like, okay, I'm going to try and just paint the tops of their shirts light green and the bottoms dark green or something and their faces flesh color and boom and just practice that like I don't know so quite a ramble about 20 minutes of one um maybe it's just because I'm staying up too late and whatever but I just like don't forget about uh, the fun side you know make up some make up some rules make up some cool miniature mashups and uh I'll catch you in the next one